True peace, true peace. Happy holiday, makers. Welcome to Branch Temple number 24 of the Morris Science Temple of America. We are a global branch temple of the Morris Science Temple of America, and we're teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may learn to love instead of hate. Come link your soul with the family of nations by clicking that block of words at the top that says World Temple. Join us. We're here every Friday and sometimes on Sunday, even though Sunday is mandatory for us as well. Uh, we just have a lot of people that come prefer to come through on the holy day, but nonetheless, which all of y'all should be also attending the Sunday gathering as well that we have. Um, that is definitely open, but we'll be getting started here in a second. I'm going to open us up with our parliamentary opening for the temple, and we're going to get started for today. Hope everyone is having a blessed week this week. We are embarking upon the last the last parts of the year. And these holy day, holidays as they call them. So I hope you all are enjoying them with your family. This part of the season is definitely definitely in full effect. First thing first, I want to give honors to the divine creator, Subhanahu with the Allah, and all in all, El Kalum. I want to give honors to the Prophet, Noble Joe Ali. I want to give honors to the original staff of the Prophet. I want to give honors to all those that came after the Prophet, such as C.N. Bey, Hakeem Bey, the Honorable Messenger Elijah Muhammad, and many, many others that came and participated in the divine and national movement of things that kicked off a lot of the work that we have to do now as the divine and national movement. So most definitely want to give a high honor to that. I want to give honor to everyone that will be participating here tonight, coming through, listening to the replays as well. I want to give honors to all things indigenous, all things Moorish, and with that, we're going to jump right into tonight message. And we are continuing our monetary series this week. Last week was Thanksgiving. And for those who enjoy being thankful on that day or just reflect on the memories of being thankful on that day, Hope you all enjoyed your Thanksgiving. But most definitely, we will be getting right back into our monetary policy because we kind of had a very, very short, a very, very short Koopa that week last week. So we're going to jump right into it this week and really dive in. So. Y'all know how we do. We're going to kick things off with our our divine supplication and our 19 affirmations. We're going to get started here this week. So y'all know how we do. We begin our prayers and thinking by using the all. Let's jump right into it. Thank you. 
Heavenly One, the Most High, who is sustain of all the worlds, we do accept the duty you have laid on us to clean with the filth made by the West and its non-submitting fools. O my sustainer, we beseech you to keep your hand over us to control the strings of the courses of our lives. I will sustain them. If we do wrong, then please show our divine blessings and forgiveness on us. You are the only one that can raise us true followers of the news bearers, and in thy name, we carry on. All right, y'all, so with that, we're going to open up our family guide and get started here with our 19 affirmations, and then jump right into our Moorish prayer and divine constitution and bylaws. These affirmations are called what we accept as fact, the daily affirmation of loyalty of the children of the Elohim. And as they state, we accept as fact the eternal laws of nature as revealed through science, past events, logic, and common sense. Reveal this right knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We accept as fact the highest laws of nature is the cooperation and harmony of all living things. We accept as fact our way of life is a means to the best end. We accept as fact that loyalty is the greatest of all honors and treason is the worst of all crimes. We accept this fact that what is good for the Holy Tabernacle is the highest virtue, and what is bad for the Holy Tabernacle is the ultimate evil. We accept this fact that the Holy Tabernacle is the finest and noblest organization for all humanity, created by circumstances, and the ancient and mystic order of Mount Chesedic is the noblest of fraternities on and above this planet. We accept this fact that creativity, love, and cooperation are the essence of success. We accept this fact that truth and facts are always and has always been the originator and creator of all success. We accept this fact that all worldwide cultures and civilizations came about from ancient Sumerians and Kamite Egyptians and the Anunnaki or Elohims from the heavens without which there will be none. We accept this fact that for the Holy Tabernacle to survive, expand, and advance, we need first of all a revolution of values and thoughts, which must start within each person by being truthful with themselves and about themselves. Therefore, we completely and categorically reject all myths, fixes, religions, and lies that have not been proven. That would include your heavens, your hell, your hellfire and brimstone, your only, your only pitchfork devils, your winged angels and your old man God character sit down at dawn of death somewhere. We deal strictly with facts. If you can't prove it, we don't want to hear it. That doesn't mean we won't listen to you. Just don't expect us to accept your beliefs by virtue of a title such as Reverend, Pastor, Deacon, Email, Sheikh, Rabbi, Minister, Theologian, ETC. That is your sensationalism, and we deal with just the facts. We accept this fact that the only true revolution is a war of good against evil, right against wrong, fairness against unfairness, loyalty against disloyalty, sincerity against insincerity. Honesty against dishonesty, and this war is fought within each person among the agreeable and disagreeable you know, him that make up your willpower. We accept this fact that the unity of our community and its success will only happen with cooperation with all and of all. We accept this fact the total unification of our humanity on the basis of truth, that is, accepting people and races for who and what they are, respecting their culture, their languages, and their beliefs, and expect the same. We accept this fact that the human race, its biological and cultural heritage, is now under attack by our own morals, our self righteousness, our desire to control industry. And these things attack the very existence of humanity. We accept this fact that males as well as females are equal in all things and should be dealt with as partners in all matters. We accept this fact that no one race of people is better than the other. In fact, no one wins the race and racism. We accept this fact that communication between different people is the cure to the ignorance that breeds the disease hate. We accept this fact that a good and well-rounded education could prevent most of the ignorance that plagues the world. We accept this fact that the all is just that, the all. You can't take from the all, you can't add to the all. We are all within the all is one. That is our concept of what you call a deity. To the fulfillment of these facts, we children of the Elohim favor pledge our lives, our sacred honor, and our spiritual zeal. All right, y'all, so we're going to jump right into our Moorish prayer here for today. Y'all know how it go. Facing the east, see that 45 degree angle. Two fingers up, five fingers up. All right. Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day. Through his holy prophet, that would draw Ali. Amen. All right, y'all. So we're going to jump right into the divine constitution and bylaws. And as they read, Act 1. The Grand Sheik and the Chairman of the Moorish Science Temple of America is empowered to make law and enforce laws with the assistance of the Prophet and the Grand Body of the Moorish Science Temple of America. The Assistant Grand Sheik is to assist the Grand Sheik in all affairs if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. 
and it is known before the members of the Moral Science Temple of America. Act two, all means that will be open and closed promptly according to the Circle Seven, and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on Friday the first man was formed in flesh, and on Friday the first man departed out of flesh and ascended unto his father by the law. For that cause, Friday is all the day for our Muslims all over the world. Act three, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all members of the Moral Science Temple of America. No member is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because the law is love. Act 4. All members must preserve these holy and divine laws and all members must obey the laws of the government because by being a Moorish American you are part and parcel of the government and must live the life accordingly. Act 5. This organization of the Moorish Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government but to obey hereby. Act 6. With us, all members must proclaim their nationality, and we're teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are part and parcel of this said government and know that they are not Negroes. Color folks, black people are Ethiopians because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why a lot of great God of the universe ordained over Jarali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7. All members must promptly attend their meetings to become a part and parcel of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from the Holy Prophet of Ajar Ali through the guidance of his father, God Allah. All right, child. This line, we're going to jump right into our weekly readings, chapter 25. Forty-seven and forty-eight. So we gonna jump right into it. Chapter twenty-five is called "The Holy Covenant of the Asiatic Nation." So we gonna jump right on in and open us up. Islam, brother, you veil. I see you. True peace, Islam. Happy holiday, brother. So we're going to jump right into chapter 25. And as it reads, Ye are the children of one father provided for by his care, and the breast of one mother had given you suck. That the bars of affection, therefore ye unite thee with thy brothers, that peace and happiness may dwell in thy father's house. And when ye separate in the world, remember the relation that binded you to love and unity, and prefer not a stranger before thy own blood. If thy brother's in adversity, assist him. If thy sister's in trouble, forsake her not. So shall the fortunes of thy father contribute to the support of his whole race, and his care be continued to you all, in your love to each other. Islam. So this is the precursor for all actions, intents, intentions, and behaviors of, of the Moorish people. Moorish people are a, a noble people. This is the, the meaning behind the word of being a Moor. This is the meaning of the definition behind it. It has a, a noble connotation to it. So all Moorish people that are misclassified as Negro, Black, and color need to understand that we, we have precursors and things like that that go, you know, that go um, before we, you know, bef should we go before any thought that, you know, we, we you know, we take action on um, beforehand. And this is one of those precursive uh, things that we should be aware of. We do have a holy covenant and, um, you know, besides the divine constitution, you have the holy covenant of the Asiatic nation. And with that, we're going to jump into chapter 25 and 28 so we can open up for this week's Cooper. As I mentioned, we're going to continue on with our monetary series that we've been having here. And you want to catch, you know, catch up on the things that we already discussed. You might want to go back, you know, just catch up. It's a lot of good information, and in especially the things that we are putting in place here through Branch Temple number 24 of the Morris Science Temple of America. So we're going to jump 
jump and dive right on in to chapter 47 called Egypt the capital empire of the dominion of Africa and as it reads the inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan and Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan his father Ham and his family were second then came the word Ethiopia which means the demarcation line of the dominion of Mexico the first true and divine name of Africa the dividing of the land between the father and the son the dominion of Cush, Northeast and Southeast Africa, and Northwest and Southwest was his father's dominion of Africa. In later years, many of their brethren from Asia and the Holy Lands joined them. The Moabites from the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa. They were the founders and all the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire, with their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who saw her from the land of Canaan, seeking new homes. Their dominion and inhabitation extended from northeast and southwest Africa across Great Atlantis even unto the present north, south, and central America and also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands before the great earthquake which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. The river Nile was dredged and made by the ancient pharaohs of Egypt in order to trade with the surrounding kingdoms. Also the Niger River was dredged by the great pharaoh of Egypt in those ancient days for trade and it extends eastward from the river Nile westward across the great Atlantic. It was used for trade and transportation. According to all true and divine records of the human race, there is no Negro, Black, or colored race attached to the human family, because all the inhabitants of Africa were and are of the human race, descended to the ancient Canaanite nation from the Holy Land of Canaan. What your ancient forefathers were, you are today, you are today without doubt or contradiction. There is no one who is able to change man from the descended nature of his forefathers, unless his power extends beyond the great universal creator law himself. These holy and divine laws are from the prophet, Noah Jali, the founder of the United Metaphor Science Temple of America. These laws are to be strictly preserved by the members of all the temples of the Moorish Science Temple of America, that they will learn to open their meeting and guide it according to the principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Every subordinate temple of the Grand Major Temple is to form under the covenant of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and to create their own laws and customs in conjunction with the laws of the Holy Prophet and the Grand Temple. I, the Prophet Noble Jali, was sent by the great God Allah to warn all Asiatics of America to repent from their sinful ways before that great and awful day that is sure to come. The time is coming every nation must worship under its own vine and feet tree, and every tongue must confess its own. Through sin and disobedience, every nation is self slavery due to the fact that they honored not the creed and principles of their forefathers. That is why the nationality of the Moors was taken away from them in 1774, and the word Negro, black and colored, was given to the Asiatics of America, who were of Moors descent, because they honored not the principles of their mother and father, and straight after the gods of Europe, of whom they knew nothing. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to touch on this last uh, verse here, verse 17, or Ayat 17, um, which which made a great key point. And we we, we might come, we, we might, well, not we might, but we most definitely going to come back and reiterate on this point some, some weeks later, um, especially after this monetary series, series that we have, because um, it's, it's really not the time for that, but we definitely going to come back and touch on it. But I will leave some 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 reference information you guys could look into um, that we will be getting into when we get into setting the record straight and the holy tablets and going through those things. But you definitely want to check out the pre-Islamic times, uh, just the pre-Islamic uh, history that, that that comes out of Africa, and you'll see the deities that were there in those cultures and those tribes before before the the, the, the Islamic conquest as they as they like to, to refer to it as sometimes. But when you when you look into that you'll see that Islam actually was there before what they consider Islam to be from an orthodox standpoint. So you see Islam showing up in previous cultures with the the the, the Teflon, with the the statues of the ancestors, as is you know as it's called in the Torah, so you, you get a lot of confusion that come into play, you know, post Islamic era versus pre Islamic era, but technically it's the same culture, and if you understand what what we we kind of go into here from the the temple, the Moorish Science Temple of America, and what Moorish Science is actually about. Yeah. Um, we, we we go into the details of the ancient and divine creed. So it's just it's just not being the Islam. So 
that's one of the things we're going to be going into even more in depth and how Islam was even around before what they considered Islam to be today and what they was calling. time and the fulfilling of the prophecies and we're gonna be we're gonna be opening up with our series here for this week continuing on so chapter 48 reads the last prophet in these days is noble Jor Ali who has prepared divinely in due time by our Lord to redeem men from their sinful ways to warn them of the great wrath which is sure to come upon the earth John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus in those days to warn and stir up the nation and to prepare them to receive the divine creed which is to be taught by Jesus. In these modern days there came a forerunner of Jesus who was divinely prepared by the great God of law and his name is Marcus Garvey who did teach and warn the nations of the earth to prepare to meet the coming prophet who was to bring the true and divine creed of Islam and his name is Noble Jar Lee who was prepared and sent to this earth by Allah to teach the old time religion and the everlasting gospel to the sons of man. That every nation shall and must worship under their own vine and fig tree and return to their own and be one with their Father God Allah. The more science temple of America is a lawfully chartered and incorporated organization. In the supported temple that desires to receive a charter, the prophet has them to issue to every state throughout the United States, ETC, that the world may hear and know the truth that among the descendants of Africa there is still much wisdom to be learned in these days for the redemption of the sons of man under love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. We as a clean and pure nation descended from the inhabitants of Africa do not desire to amalgamate or marry into the families of the pale-skinned nations of Europe. Need to serve the gods of their religion, because our forefathers are the true and divine founders of the first religious creed for the redemption and salvation of mankind on earth. Therefore, we are returning to the church and we are returning the church and Christianity back to the European nation as it was prepared by their forefathers for their earthly salvation, while we, the Moorish Americans, are returning to Islam, which is founded by our forefathers for our earthly and divine salvation. The covenant of the great God of law, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be longer upon the earth land, which the Lord thy God of law had given thee. Come, all ye Asiatics of America, and hear the truth about your nationality and birthrights, because you are not Negroes. Learn of your forefathers' ancient and divine creed, that you will learn to love instead of hate. We're trying to uplift all the humanity. Come and link yourself with the family of nations. We honor all true and divine prophets. It's not. So, we're going to jump right into it. And continue our continue our monetary series that we have been having over the past couple of weeks. So we're gonna jump right into right into the Wikipedia we've been Wikipedia link we've been reading from. Put the link in the chat. And we're going to get started here. All right, so. Let's go ahead and jump right into it, y'all. So we stopped two weeks ago. We stopped right at we we went through the paper monies. Okay, I think that's where we stopped it. We stopped right at paper, the paper money and we was gonna continue on from there. So we gonna kick it up from there and, and start getting into that section here. So we're gonna go through some things. We're gonna embark upon some, um, some information. Uh, as we continue to go through 
this series because it, it's needed information and we got to dive in, as I've been saying, especially pointing out the things that are there that are still included from an indigenous people standpoint and things that you, you should be paying attention for. Because although there's been a lot of erasure and cancel culture, you know, prior to this era of cancel culture, because indigenous people, cultures, histories, knowledges, languages, a lot of this has been, you know, kept away from them and taken out of history, it's taken out of the books of history and the owls of history itself. So we we gonna wake it up and and at least revive as much as we can by reading some of the, the, the talking points that come from different source, you know, reference points and things like that. So we gonna we gonna read from the first paper money. Uh, first paper money reference here on Wikipedia, and I put the link in the chat. So we're gonna get started from there, and we're gonna keep it keep it keep it moving from there. So. Starting out, it says, paper money was introduced in Song Dynasty, China, during the 11th century. The development of the banknote began in the 7th century with local issues of paper currency. Its, root were, its roots were in merchant receipts of deposit during the Tang Dynasty, 618 through 907 AD, I'm sure that is, as merchants and wholesalers desired to avoid the heavy bulk of copper coinage in large commercial transactions. The issue of credit notes is often for a limited duration and at some discount to the promised amount later. The Jiazi, the Jiazi, nevertheless did not replace coins during the Song Dynasty. Paper money was used alongside the coins. The central government soon observed the economic advantages of printing paper money, issuing a monopoly right of several of the deposit shops to the issuance of these certificates of deposit. By the early 12th century, the banknotes issued in a single year amounted to 26 million strings of cash coins. So this started with the Sulu, with the Sulus of the Tang Dynasty, which were also a part of Islamic history that were very big in Southeast Asia and the Tang or uh, your Moorish uh, originally your, your Moorish Asiatics that were there also in Asia um, that are of the, the Japheth High branch so we want to take that into account because a lot of this stuff is not going to be told to us um, you know we don't think it's just you know pale skinned people and there's no indigenous melanated people, you know, dark skinned people, Moorish people, who is a part of, you know, these 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 great inventions of history. When in actuality, all this started with us as indigenous people. So we got to be able to point it out everywhere and wherever we see, um, you know, the holes and the missing gaps. So let's jump to the next section here. States. In the 13th century, paper money became known in Europe through the accounts of travelers such as Marco Polo and William of Rupert. Marco Polo's account of paper money during the Yuan Dynasty is the subject of a chapter of his book, The Travels of Marco Polo, titled How the Great Khan Causeth It the Bark of Trees, made into something like paper to pass for money all over his country. In medieval Italy and Flanders, because of the insecurity and impracticality of transporting large sums of money over long distances, money traders started using promissory notes. In the beginning, these were personally registered, but they soon became a written order to pay the amount to whomever had it in their possession. These notes can be seen as a predecessor to regular bank notes. So they're admitting that promissory notes were used in ancient Asia. So if it was used in ancient Asia and 
they're not making you know a recollection to how it was also used in ancient ancient uh, Sumeria, Babylon, etc., ancient Mesopotamia, where it most definitely would be considered a promissory note or a book entry credit as a promissory note and IOU because that's technically what it means and we made reference to that a couple weeks ago about how the first IOUs and the money of accounts came about so definitely there's a connection to promissory notes and owing someone you know going back then you know even going back then to the ancient Mesopotamian times or even ancient Egypt because a lot of things that get you know get that get get erased or forgotten about in history is is right there if you you know you do your research and you find that in ancient Egypt there was or ancient time array ancient Kemet how you want to you want to make reference to it you find that there was a lot of accounting going on during that time as well uh, as well as you know banking and other things so we're going to jump into this next section which is called trade bills of exchange and this is supposed to be bringing us toward more modern times so this section states bills of exchange became prevalent with the expansion of European trade toward the end of the middle ages a flourishing Italian wholesale trade in cloth Wooden, woolen clothing, wine, tin, and other commodities were heavily was heavily dependent on credit for its rapid expansion. Goods were supplied to a buyer against a bill of exchange, which constituted the, the buyer's promises the, the buyer's promise to make payment at some specified future date, provided that the buyer was reputable or the bill was endorsed by a credible grant guarantor. The seller could then present the bill to a merchant banker and redeem it in money at a discounted value before it actually became due. The main purpose of these bills, was, bills nevertheless, was that traveling with cash was particularly dangerous at the time. A deposit could be made with a, with a banker in one town. In turn, a bill of exchange was handed out that could be redeemed in another town. These bills could also be used as a form of payment by the seller to make additional purchases from his own suppliers. Thus, the bills, as an early form of credit, became both a medium of exchange and a medium for storage of value, like the loans made by the Egyptian grain banks. This trade credit became a significant source for the creation of new money. In England, bills of exchange became an important form of credit and money during last quarters, during last quarter of the 18th century in the first quarter of the 19th century, where banknotes, checks, and cash credit lines were widely available. So you see, this ideal came from ancient Egypt, as, as we mentioned, and it's right here in the reference point. So they're letting you know, as the prophet let us know, that certain things were set up for trade and transportation, right in chapter 47. So the dominion, uh, the, the the dominion and capital of ancient Egypt, and the things that it did, it set the precursor for 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 for, for, for Europe taking off, and even Asia taking off with the the, the added on contribution during that time. So this next section we're gonna get into is this is a real court, real short, um, you know, real real short explanation about the Islamic golden age of, of the monetary, uh, you know, of the monetary contribution of things. So jumping right in, it says at around the same time in the medieval Islamic world, a vigorous monetary economy was created during the 17th, during, during the 7th through 12th centuries on the basis of expanding levels of circulation of a stable high value currency, which is the dinar that make a reference to. Innovations were innovations introduced by Muslim economists, traders, and merchants, including the earliest use of credit, checks, promissory notes, saving accounts, transactional accounts, loan, loaning, trust, exchange rates, the transfer of credit and debit, and banking institutions for loans and deposits. So you had actual banking institutions come in during the Islamic days. 
and this is actually your early Moorish days. Um, and as as well, if you like go into the reference point that I made earlier, you go into looking into those pre-Islamic days and those deities and things like that beforehand. This is that ancient Moorish culture, an ancient divine creed of peace, which we we refer to in this day and time, Islamicism. Uh, and during that time, it was called Milad Ibrahim or Milad the Way. And then it became the Dean Al Dean. And you know, later times during Islamic times, the Dean, the way, and specifically the way of Ibrahim. And that way was the way of submitting to the, the divine creator, the all in all, El Kalun, the source. So, and there was no confusion between the divine creator, the source, and the ancestors and the ancestral spirits and things like that. Do Though through time, uh, a lot of misunderstanding has been the cause of that and just, you know, bunching up the, the ancestral spirits with the, with the all, the source, the creator, El Kalum, where in actuality, the ancestral spirits, the deities, the gods, they are all a part of the all, whether it's, your, whether you're referring to Allah, Allah, you know, any other deity per se. So now we can make reference to the source, the father, the heavenly father or the divine mother as El Kalom, as the all, but in actuality, El Ku, the all, is the source or is Allah or Allah, uh, uh, Allahi, Allahi, the, the source, the one, uh, which is neither, you know, um, described as a human being or anything like that if you get into the details of it. So, this right here is really giving you a reference point to who was a part of the expanding of the banking system with the dinar. And the dinar being one of the earliest forms of currency that um, that has been used besides the shekel. So technically the shekel gave birth to what was done with the dinar and the expansion of it, even you know, establishing banking institutions and things like that. So the prophet gave you much guidance and wisdom on on these things. So you will actually know, you know, it was us, indigenous peoples, us Moorish people, who was the innovators, and we was a, you know, we was 500, 600, 700 years, 700 years ahead of time in technology, and, and whether it's economic technology, you know. Uh, geographical technology, oceanic, ETC, we was ahead of time. You know, we was ahead of the whole world. And, you know, when they caught up is, you know, a lot of what you have reference to as far as history and these reference points that they use for history, their story, his story, um, you know, uh, about, you know, about economics, about technology and developments, even religions and cultures. You hear it from more of a Eurocentric point of view versus a, a Afrocentric or, you know, indigenous, more so indigenous standpoint. So we're going to jump into this next section called the Indian subcontinent. And it's, it's just a little bit longer than the, 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 the last section. And it states here that at around the same time in the medieval Islamic world, a vigorous monetary economy, oh, that, that's the, the Islamic one. So uh, the, the, the Indian subcontinent section states, in the Indian subcontinent, Shur Shah Shuri, Suri, 1540 through 1545, introduced the silver coin called the rupia, or rupee, weighing 178 grams. It was used, its use was continued by the Mughal Empire. The history of the rupee traces back to ancient India, circa 3rd century BC. Ancient India was one of the earliest issuers of coins in the world, along with the Lydian staters, several other Middle Eastern coinages, and the Chinese wing. The term is from rupa. Rupiah, 
a Sanskrit term for silver coin. From Sanskrit, rupa, beautiful form. It's a, 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 I guess they're trying to say that is a beautiful way of saying rupa, rupia, uh, which is R U P Y, and then rupa, beautiful form, R U P A. So, continuing, it says the imperial taka was officially introduced by the monetary reforms of Mohammed bin Tukluk, the emperor of the Delhi Sultanate, in 1329. It was modeled as representative money, a concept pioneered as paper money by the Mongols in China and Persia. The tanka was minted in copper and brass. Its value was exchanged with gold and silver reserves in the imperial treasury. The currency was introduced to was introduced due to the shortage, the shortage of metals. So here again, they reaffirm it, and you see an uh, Indian with a Moorish name, Muhammad bin Tulu. So you, you, you see the, 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 the culture there. You see that ancient Hebraic way of living, language, and all those things there. And if you really get into it, that that a bread culture uh, also has connections to other tribal dialects and things like that that were used during the time. And and and, and cultures that 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 were thriving during that time, going back to Samaria, etc. So you had those civilizations, and then you had, just same way you do to the, to the, today, you have the little small villages and just little small communities that, that and settlements that people came together on versus those the big civilizations that were built and your big metropolitan cities that were built even back then. So you, you see clearly, um, you know, the, the, the time stamp through through history itself and just the information that, that that is still available to us today. So the next section is called tallies and we're gonna end it here and we're gonna jump into our next segment for today which is current events and close it out with our re- reading of the El Holy Quran for today. And as it states here in this next section, the acceptance of symbolic forms of money mean that a symbol could be used to represent something of value that was available in physical storage somewhere else in space, such as grain in the warehouse or something of value that would be available later, such as a promissory note or a bill of exchange. A document ordering someone to pay a certain sum of money to another on a specific date or when certain conditions have been fulfilled. In the 12th century, the English monarchy introduced an earlier version of the bill of exchange in the form of a notched piece of paper, as a, as a, in the form of a notched piece of wood known as a tally stick. Tallies originally came into use at a time when paper was rare and costly, but their use persisted until the early 19th century, even after paper money had became prevalent. The notches denoted various amounts of taxes payable to the crown. Initially, tallies were simply a form of receipt to the taxpayer at the time of rendering his dues. As the revenue department became more efficient, they began issuing tallies to denote a promise a promise of the tax assess assessi to make future tax payments at specified times during the year. Each tally consisted of a matching pair. One stick was given to the assessi at the time of assessment representing the amount of taxes to be paid later. The other held by the treasury representing the amount of taxes to be collected at a future date. The treasury discovered that these tallies could also be used to create money. When the crown had exhausted its current resources, it could use the tally receipts representing future tax payments due to the crown as a form of payment to its own creditors, who in turn could either collect the tax revenue directly from those assessed or use the same tally to pay their own taxes to the government. 
The tablets could also be sold to other parties in exchange for gold or silver coin at a discount, reflecting the length of time remaining until the tax was due for payment. Thus, the tallies became an accepted medium of exchange for some types of transactions and an accepted store of value. Like the gyro banks before it, the treasury soon realized that it could also issue tallies. That were, thus, the tallies became an accepted medium of exchange for some types of transactions and an accepted store of value. Like the gyro banks before it, the treasury soon realized that it could also issue tallies that were not backed by any specific assessment of taxes. By doing so, the treasury created new money that was backed by public trust and confidence in the monarch, rather than by specific revenue receipts. So we know what he got this concept from also as well, going back to the Ashango bone from ancient Africa. So a lot of the things that was done by the Europeans, by the Asiatics, a lot of these things originated out of Africa as well. And that dominion between the the the, the progenitor Moors and those that and those Moors that descended from them when the Moors linked up with the Amorites and things like that and a lot more people started mixing and just you know mingling together and a lot of the blood a lot of the bloods bloodlines became kind of mixed up so we're gonna end it right there um i hope that was great detail for you all from what we've been giving information on here in this monetary series and things that we've been touching on and we'll continue to touch on so with that we're gonna reset the room real quick Welcome to Branch Temple number 24, Other More Science Temple of America. We are a global branch temple, Other More Science Temple of America. And we're teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may learn to love instead of hate. Come link yourself with the family of nations by clicking that block of words at the top that says World Temple. And join us for Friday Holy Day, Sermon, Koopas, and also on Sundays for our Sunday newcomers gathering. And we're going to jump right into our new current events. Um, and same thing that happened that I mentioned last week. We we we, we definitely still pushing toward the monetization, having to go through some appeals and things like that with them right now at the, at the moment, and, and get down to the bottom of what we need to do to monetize our our YouTube channel, and um, also working on our website too again. To get them back up and running, see what's going on with our websites. Like I said, we have some technical difficulties and some issues with that, so we're gonna get that back up and running. And we also been working on working on donors and donations. Um, as I've been mentioning over the past couple of months, me and Brother Raheem been working on some things in the background here as we continue to go along and and, and build up the project that we have for the world currency and and also our global independent school district. So with that, we're gonna jump into our weekly reading from El's Holy Quran. And we're gonna pick up where we left off two weeks ago. Probably gonna read this uh, section here, and we gonna continue on from there next week. Hope oh, the weather is okay where y'all are at. I know currently, uh, at, at, at today at the point of. At the moment of this recording, we is definitely pouring down. So let's go ahead and jump into this week's reading.
All right, so we're going to pick up from where we left off last or two weeks ago. So we're just going to read this quick section here. We're going to close it out there. In this section of El Salvador Quran, chapter 41, called the, the, the Secret, states, if he does take other sources, he will be clearly astray. He is going to enter Al Janat. The Elohim didn't send any more ones sent after him. They were struck dead. They will be brought forth in the Anunnaki's possession. And the ayahs read, Surely I, if I did, verily I was clearly astray into error. Surely I have faith in your Rob, sustainer. So listen to me. It was said, you are to enter the Janet garden. He said, only if my kindred knew of that which he, my Rob, has forgiven me. And he has made me of the Mukramin, generous ones. And we, we not I, Elohim, did not send on his calm kindred from after him any armies from the skies, Anunnaki's from other planets beyond the sun. And we were not Muzalim, one sent down. Some are born here. Surely there was except one, Sayed, Sahat, loud cry, so as if they were struck dead. O oh, grief on the slaves that which is to come to them from the Rasul, one sent, except they were ridiculing him, ridiculing him. Didn't they see how we, Elohim Anunnaki, have destroyed our Karu? The generations before them, surely they will not return unto them. And if all will be gathered together, they are brought forth in our, our, not my possession. All right, so we're gonna stop there. But this is pretty much just another a reminder of, you know, hey, didn't we, we give y'all this warning from, for the last generation? Y'all didn't pay attention to what happened to them. You know, we didn't uh, we didn't do what we did last time, but we most definitely gave y'all a warning about what happened to previous generation. So that's exactly kind of what we're getting into here with the monetary policy. In the monetary series, we're getting into what happened in the past during the ancient times and how we are the pioneers of the currencies and the economic systems that you see today. So, with that, we're going to jump right into our holy instructions. Kind of keep Keep the holy instructions a little short this week. So I'm gonna change the link at the top of the room. And we're gonna touch on these holy instructions. It's line. And then we're gonna close out with our we're gonna close out with our with our mandatory literature for tonight. Islam. So y'all know how we do. Friday is the holy day, oh, you will know. When the call is proclaimed to supplication on Friday, the day of assembly, hasten earnestly to the remembrance of the Heavenly Father and Divine Mother and leave all business and traffic that is best for you if you but knew. And when prayer is finished, then may you disperse through the land and seek the bounty of God and celebrate the praises of God of Tan without stint that ye may prosper. All right, so all chaplaincy and temple services, they ought to be open and closed promptly according to the circle seven, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. You know, Friday is the holy day of rest because on a Friday the first man was formed in flesh, and on a Friday the first man departed out of flesh and ascended unto his father God of love. So, 
For that reason, Friday is a holy day for all monsters and peacemakers all over the world. And this is according to Act 2 of the Divine Constitution and Bylaws by the Prophet of Joe Ali. So, we're going to touch on some few things here. We know that those uh, templates, adepts, and civilians attending holiday service, you must have your heads covered with either turban, fez, or kufi, or spiritual covering. Baseball cap should not be worn in the temple or during temple service. The Sunday temple service and meeting is mandatory, and all Moorish nationals, templates, temple denizens must promptly attend the temple service and send their children to the Sunday school gatherings. So this is a perfect time for you to get, you know, with your children and really have that one-on-one time for yourself and your children. It's mandatory. It's long. So, for those that are looking to become members of the Morning Science Temple of America, you have your, your, your heads of your temple of any temple jurisdiction. So, wherever in the temple you at, they're not to charge for naturalization or the overcharge for cars, buttons, or anything issued by the profit. Just make sure you keep that in mind. Those that are contributing to any of those type of things are not more civilians or patrons, but they are robbers. Simple and plain. Temple nationality and membership in the Holy Temple's vast estate, what we call a public beneficiary trust. Sisters and brothers, Kenny Kenfolk is free, not only here, but all over the world. So, all Kenny Kenfolk designed to become a civilian of a subordinate temple must follow the instructions from their temple secretary and acquire the application for naturalization with the temple secretary. So we're going to go over our Holy Shahada, the procedure of nationality procedure. Once nationality will be held on Holy Day, false civilians, denizens, templates, peacemakers, and Muslims all over the world. During the ceremony, the new civilian or templates will be ordained to El Bay or Day and given his or her royal peers title of Ken, Honorable Lady, Noble, Nid, Naya, Prince or Princess, Lord Grand Sheik, and or Divine Minister, and receive his or her nationality card and button from the Divine Minister of the Grand Major Temple. For our conclusion of the nationality proclamation, the Grand Sheik and the Divine Minister will have the civilian templates and temple prospect stand while he or she reads the authority of the Moorish Times Temple of America. And you can look into the Religious Corporation Act document that can be found in her survived statutes that gives the Moorish Times Temple of America, Asia, and Africa the authority to restore the nationality and birthrights of the lost Haiti of the lost Asiatics of America, Asia, Africa, and all world islands. So with that, y'all, we're going to jump into our holy, we're going to jump into our minute, our, our mandatory literature for tonight, and we're going to take it on home. I, I know we've started a little bit earlier uh, on our holy day. So that means some people might not even get the message or be able to attend at at the time because we definitely started a whole hour early. So that means we might be ending a whole hour early at at least you know six, seven, eight o'clock between that time. So we want to make sure you guys are getting. Uh, adjusted to the schedule change because I definitely had to myself. So with that, we're going to jump into the mandatory literature from the prophet. And we're going to close it out for this week as well.
in Islam. So we're going to drop into these mandatory messages from the Prophet. This is to be proclaimed in all temple meetings and temple service. The Prophet say, Islam, I'm glad to know that I have a few faithful Moors among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There's a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people of our side of the nation that claim that I was only a joke and unreal. But now since they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens, they're working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that attribute to the movement and the uplifting funds. The ones that paid their divine respect to me will be remembered. That is why I'm calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me. Your, Moorish, your, your, your prophet and your divine Moorish movement. I need finance and I need it badly. You know, before I need finance so badly as I do at present, so I can serve aside the discord that's facing the nation. It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without me, the prophet, being here. It has been proven by my works, which I have performed in the past few years. Prophet, that would you Islam, so we're going to close it out, y'all, tonight with the Moorish prayer. Hope y'all all enjoy time with your family as well. Close out with the Moorish prayer. If I can get it to pull up. Facing the east, feet at a 45 degree angle. Two fingers up, five fingers up. All right. Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace. Freedom and justice. Allah is my protector and my guide by night and by day. Through his holy prophet, Noble Jawali. Amen. All right, y'all. Uh, We're going to close it out for tonight because I'm, I'm also having technical difficulties on my phone. So with that, hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all weekend with your family. True peace. Islam. Wadu. Well,